Well, Separate Ways was a huge hit for Journey and a strong follow-up to their Escape album, which featured hits like Don't Stop Believing and Open Arms. But Separate Ways is no hit for the nearly 50% of couples who will see their marriages come to an end each year. Hey guys, welcome to Rock and Real Estate. I'm Rob Spinoza with Guaranteed Rate. If you're a homeowner, a home buyer, or even a real estate professional, I've got your backstage pass to an understanding of the mortgage business. Okay, so let's talk about what happens when a married couple owns real estate together and they decide to end their relationship. Often one spouse needs to buy out the other, hence an equity buyout or divorce buyout refinance, called by different names but means the same thing. What do the parties need to know as they go down this road together and begin to unwind their marriage and their real estate ownership? First, a bit of mortgage housekeeping. When you make an application as a borrower, you may do so under one of only three marital statuses. You're either married, you're unmarried, which could be single, divorced, widowed, or you are separated. Now, if you say you're separated, you're pro probably also going to be separated and have your loan application denied unless you have a legally enforceable separation agreement. We're gonna to get to more of that in just a minute. Each of the different marital statuses is going to evoke a different response once the application goes into underwriting. But perhaps the most important thing to understand in any equity buyout, divorce buyout situation is this. If you do not have a legally enforceable separation agreement, if you do not have a divorce decree that has gone through the courts, getting your transaction to close is both very risky and very difficult. Having a legal separation agreement or a divorce decree on the other hand, which clearly spells out the rights of the party, that is a ticket for smooth sailing through the loan process. You know, no matter how complex the guidelines may be in our industry for any given scenario, sometimes we find that the simplest way to express it and communicate it is with an example. And I think in the case of a divorce buyout, it's a great way to do it. Let's say that a married couple owns a property together. It's worth $600,000. And at the time of their divorce, they've got a $300,000 remaining loan balance on the property. The divorce decree spells out that each party is going to get 50% of the equity. That's 150 to each party. Now that means that the remaining spouse, the one who's going to keep the house, needs to refinance for $450,000. $300,000 for the original balance, and then the $150,000 equity buyout that's going to go to the other spouse. Now here's where things can get difficult and where mortgage planning really helps. Remember we said that the remaining spouse is now going to have a loan of $450,000. That's larger than they had before they split up. And presumably we're only going to have one party making the payments on that larger mortgage. Now yes, there may be alimony, there may be child support, there may be other spousal support that will help with the future payments, but knowing how we're gonna qualify that mortgage in advance gives the divorcing parties a better idea of what to expect once they go into the loan process. If you find yourself in a divorce buyout situation and you need our help, get in touch. It would be our pleasure to take an already stressful situation and help make it a little bit more manageable. You can reach us anytime at any of the links below. You can contact me directly at 415-367-5959. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and we'll do our best to keep the hits coming.